Hi, welcome to This Week in Medicine, January 18th, 2022. Uh, we're a day late because we honored Martin Luther King Day yesterday. And we still have our laser pointer. Uh, this is brought to you by the Fox Health Foundation, whose educational mission uh, usually is easy to accomplish when there's not uh, COVID Omicron. So we'll be back to that. Dr. Yamamoto has been invited uh, to give a talk at the scientific session of the American College of Cardiology in a couple of months. So we will attend that together. I hope it will be in person and not virtual. I think that might happen. Again, the Fox Health Foundation brings you a wellness center. Uh, Carrie, our excellent nutritionist, is doing a great job. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for everything that you're doing. We're on an Omicron pause with yoga. We still do have classes for adults. What came into the inbox this week? Omicron and treatment. Not too much about Omicron and treatment because thankfully I haven't had any patients ask me for treatment uh, because most people are getting through this. It is a wicked bad cold. It is bad. Your throat is sore. Your body aches. You have a fever, headache. It's nasty, but it's not so nasty that it's necessarily worth getting citrovimab or Paxlovid. Everybody so far is doing well, but I have a great wonderful population of patients who take very good care of themselves. So being healthy is definitely a major way to get through Omicron. Uh, a fourth shot is found to be less effective against Omicron. This was an Israeli study released today. I believe it was today, which makes sense because our vaccines were made against original COVID-19, not against Omicron. So that's why a fourth shot would be considered less effective. Uh, I agree with that. I think a lot of uh, experts in the United States agree with that, that we need to get perhaps to a situation where we are with influenza vaccination, where it's more fluid and we can change the components of our vaccine depending on how the virus mutates. Uh, the fourth shot is not less effective for people who never had an immune response to the first three. So we've talked about this before. Uh, these are the people who don't have an immune response to the first three shots. So it's not a booster for them. They never got immunity to begin with because they had an organ transplant or they were immunosuppressed from cancer or chemotherapy. So for these people, a fourth shot is a hope that maybe they'll finally have an antibody response. Uh, antigen versus PCR tests. Quite frankly, I have not put in many orders for PCR tests because there are so many people who have antigen tests at home. So the home testing, even though there has been scarcity, actually has been really helpful the past couple of weeks. And that's because all of you patients and families have been very diligent about getting these tests, going to your public libraries, uh, getting them from school. So it's pretty impressive. Patients have been telling me they're doing their own antigen tests. They're reporting their symptoms. And so they don't really need a PCR confirmatory test because with symptoms and a positive antigen test, you have Omicron. Omicron and travel tests, this is a little tougher. It's still a problem for people to leave their destination because they have to prove they have a negative antigen test. Or if you're flying someplace, I do have uh, patients who went on vacation this past week. Um, some of them had Omicron over the Christmas holidays. So they needed a letter from me saying they had Omicron. They're 10 days post their Omicron infection. And they may or may not have to also substantiate that with a negative antigen test, which would indicate that they are not contagious anymore. Omicron in school, there were just maybe 12 or 15 schools in our county that are on a pause. They're going virtual learning for the next two weeks to try and bring down the rate of transmission. Uh, what happens if your antigen test is still negative, but you have symptoms? Well, that might be a time to do the PCR test um, because you probably do have COVID. There's not much else circulating right now and really not much reporting of influenza out yet. Omicron and elective surgery. I don't think it looks like it's impacting elective surgery too much. One of the local hospitals shut down two of its operating rooms, but otherwise a lot of the ambulatory surgical sites, that means places that are not hospitals that do surgery, they're open and running. Uh, Omicron and masks, uh, you know a good quality mask stops an Omicron infection. We've talked about this before. Okay, the four antigen test kits from the USG, the United States government, are available. You can put your order in, well, today. Uh, the website opened today, even though the official start is supposed to be tomorrow. There are two ways to get there. There might be more than two ways, but these are the two I found, covidtest.gov 
or special.uspsunitedstatespostalservice.com test kits. Both of those work. They lead to the same website. So I was uh, bored today, had a little downtime, so I clicked on covidtest.gov. It was very easy. I got this done in 15 seconds. And this is my response. Hello, Kristen Yamamoto, my married name. Uh, thank you for placing your order. Um, I'll be getting my four at home free test kits at my residential address. Uh, my order status was placed. They have my email. Uh, and it's a really quick uh, uh, entry site. It's very easy. You just put in your name and address and an email address. Supposedly, if you do not have access to the internet and you can't order these through the internet, uh, there will be a phone number. I don't have the phone number yet. I haven't seen it, but you should be able to order this by phone. There are only four tests per residential address. So if you're just one person living in a residence, you can get four tests. But if your family's bigger than four people, you're still only getting four tests. A practical guide to testing, because testing is confusing. If you are exposed, but you have no symptoms, you should test at home with a home antigen test, probably day two to five. It's very unlikely that you're exposed and the next day you will be positive on an antigen test or the next day you will be sick. It's probably gonna take two or three days for you to be sick. So if you're exposed, somebody told you they had COVID or you were in a setting where people were not wearing masks and you were suspicious, test on day two to five with an antigen test. If you're sick, you don't know when you had exposure, go ahead and test immediately and then test until day five with your home antigen test. If any of those days, one through five are positive, just stop. You don't need to keep antigen testing. If you have symptoms, you're sick, and you have a positive antigen test, you probably have COVID. High likelihood you have COVID. If your antigen test is negative, but you're symptomatic, then you could do the PCR test because it's more likely to pick up that RNA early in infection. So if you really need to know if you really do have COVID and you can't wait two days for your antigen test to turn positive, then a PCR test might be prudent for you. Once you're positive on the antigen test, don't keep testing. You should hold on to those antigen tests because you're probably only getting four from the federal government, correct? Uh, maybe you have some from the local library. Maybe you got some online that you ordered. But wait, if you want to use them, use them days five through 10 of your illness wait until you're feeling better because it's nice to have two sequential negative antigen tests that would indicate that you are no longer contagious. So again, if you want to prove you are not contagious after you've been ill with Omicron, then anywhere from day five to 10 of that illness, do two antigen tests, one each day. If each is negative, then you're no longer contagious. Now, I don't really have anybody who's been able to prove that. Most of my patients are still positive on the antigen test day five through 10, so they're not leaving um, their uh, quarantine. And it's really not leaving quarantine on day five through 10 if you're still positive. You're wearing an N95 mask or KN95. You can leave the house according to the CDC recommendations, but you're still considered contagious. Um, and really, I don't have many patients who can get two negative antigen tests on day five through 10. I'm a little suspicious that maybe the contagious period really does go to day 10 or 11. Now, when would you use this PCR test? Uh, again, they're hard to get. You have no symptoms and no known exposure, but your antigen test is positive. So you really wonder, is this a false positive antigen test? Do I really have COVID? Then it seems okay to do a confirmatory PCR test. Again, like I said, you don't have time to wait three days for an antigen test to turn positive because you're under pressure. You need to know if you're positive because maybe you were exposed to somebody who is immunocompromised and you might have gotten them sick. Uh, for preoperative clearance, it's useful. You don't use it to prove that you're free of disease. Why do we not do this? Because a PCR test can be positive for two months or the original research said 38 days post illness because you have dead virus, you have RNA particles in your nose that's turning this PCR test positive. So you're not contagious to anybody, but you could still be positive on this PCR test for a while. Remember the tests that we have are the rapid antigen tests. Here are some examples. Binax Now is a very popular one, Quick View at Home. Um, how do you use it and when? We just discussed that. Don't use a PCR test to get out of quarantine. We just discussed that because it could be positive for quite a while. You can use the antigen test to get out of quarantine, but we are all pretty much in consensus saying that it should be two tests, not just one. DC and Maryland are not leading in COVID Omicron. My previous slide said we were, but we're changing this to not because we probably peaked. So that is based on 
um, seven day incidents per 100,000 people. So if you look at that data point, uh, we are probably over our peak and we're coming down the other side. Hospitalizations, uh, your hospitalization rates of COVID are easy to look at. You can look on your hospital system and let's say for example, two weeks ago, there were 500 patients throughout the hospital system that were positive for COVID. I checked today, now they're 350. Let's say, for example, your local hospital had 50 people who were positive for COVID in the hospital, not necessarily primarily sick with COVID. They incidentally mostly had COVID, but not primarily, meaning their reason for admission to the hospital was not COVID. That number was 50, it's now down to 25. So I think we are looking at hospital numbers coming down. Um, a lot of the experts uh, in the media are saying that we're coming down on the other side locally. So that's for Maryland and DC, because again, we hit peak earliest, which probably was just around Christmas time. Uh, we don't have home testing results, so we can't tell for sure. Uh, but I would say just from my inbox, when I get people emailing me saying that they have COVID, the numbers have come down quite a bit. So I think we're on the other side of the curve and we already peaked. Uh, again, we also have a highly vaccinated population, but we did have a very high incidence of Omicron again probably because of social situations and not masking and there still is a persistence of the unvaccinated in the ICUs that is a constant truism again the symptoms of Omicron will go over this quickly the bad sore throat it's bronchitis probably not a pneumonia of course if you get bronchitis that can make you more susceptible to pneumonia and viral bronchitis or viral pneumonia can lead to bacterial pneumonia so if you think you're getting better from Omicron but then all of a sudden you get a fever and start feeling worse, you definitely want to contact your doctor. Night sweats are a huge symptom. Some people don't even have fever, but fever can happen. Body aches are pretty bad. You feel like you were hit by a truck. Uh, the fatigue is pretty impressive. I think most people are experiencing overwhelming fatigue for two to four weeks. Um, there isn't a big report of lack of smell, but if you saw today, there's been identified a genetic variant that may predispose to the lack of smell if you get a COVID infection. Maybe some diarrhea and really no blood test abnormalities of this, which was not the case at all for COVID-19, uh, original COVID-19 and Delta virus. Those people had systemic disease that you could see on blood tests. Again, the mask study, just bringing it up again, masks work. Um, so remember this study, wear your KN95, an N95 mask, and if you're in an environment where other people are wearing it, you probably won't get Omicron. The DMV still has their test kits available at the library. Same thing with Montgomery County at the library, so check your websites. These websites were great, and they helped me a lot in the early part of the pandemic, especially uh, the DC Department of Health website. Virginia probably has more available test kits now at their libraries. Remember Omicron and social groups? Just too easy to get Omicron if you're not wearing a mask. Omicron therapeutics, uh, Regeneron doesn't work against Omicron. And remember we said Omicron is now predominant. We're now at least at 90% of all the um, cases being Omicron, not Delta. Regeneron worked against Delta virus. Um, so we're not giving Regeneron anymore. Citrovimab is available and I can access it. So if you are sick enough, as an outpatient, and I didn't send you to the emergency room, but you're sick, immunocompromised, we're worried about your ability to fight Omicron, um, I can order Citrovimab, but it goes through a pretty stringent review process. This is not just for anybody. You have to meet categorical um, criteria for your susceptibility to severe disease. So Citrovimab is being very strictly controlled, and a lot of that is because we don't have a lot of it. Evusheld is not for treatment. That is for giving people antibody protection who were not able to make antibodies by vaccination. Um, that is still hard to get. It's supposedly available and we're still waiting for some of our patients who are immunocompromised to get it as a way to prophylax them. Um, it's there, but we just haven't been able to successfully give it yet, hopefully in the next week or two. Uh, Paxlovid is approved, but again, there are criteria and we do not have any pharmacies, at least in my practice area, uh, that have Paxlovid available. A fourth shot, generally no. Um, this is only for people who didn't respond because their immune system was so weak for some reason. Either we were giving them medication, they have cancer, uh, their organ transplants. 
So no, you don't need a fourth shot. You probably don't want a fourth shot because it was formulated for COVID-19. So let's give this some time and see where Omicron goes and see if we even need a fourth shot. And if we do, if it needs to be reformulated. Is this the silver lining? Uh, I brought this up back in December. It looks like it is true. Omicron wiped out Delta. Is Delta permanently gone? We'll have to wait and see, but it's looking pretty good. Here's the US and Omicron. If you mask, that adds to your vaccination status and gives you pretty good protection. Tony's tip of the week, wear a mask coming into the office. That's a high quality mask. Do not try to get narcotics and pain pills over the weekend or even sedatives. Anything that's a controlled substance that requires special prescription. The opioid epidemic has caused pharmacies to stop giving these prescriptions out on the weekends. It's very hard to get. And it's not me. It's the pharmacies. We have a two-factor authentication system that uh, goes through the computer and clears. When I put in a prescription over the weekend, it works. The problem is the pharmacies do not want to do it over the weekend. And this is part of the opioid epidemic fallout. So people who legitimately need their medications, I even had a post-surgical patient who could not get pain pills on the weekend for a surgery that was done on a Friday because it was the weekend and the weekend pharmacist would not authorize it. Um, part of this authorization has to do with the insurance approving payment. So if you want to pay out of pocket for your prescriptions on the weekend that are narcotic or controlled substance, sometimes you can talk the pharmacist into letting you do that off insurance. But if you want your insurance to pay for it, then you need a pre-authorization from insurance. And that's only something that can happen during the week. We have to put in a form through the computer, goes to your insurance, the insurance spends a day or two deciding if they will pay for your prescription, and then sends that authorization back to the pharmacy and says, okay, we've considered this for two days, now we will pay for this prescription. But that does not happen on the weekends. So again, pay special attention to your prescription needs during the week. This is all doable Monday through Friday but becomes completely undoable on the weekends. And I think this is going to get worse. So we just have to watch this. It's getting worse uh, this year in 2022, notably more difficult than last year. Fast pitch, uh, Omicron is here. If you go to an event maskless, well, then you're taking a big chance that you would get Omicron. Um, revisit your mask habits indoors and upgrade your mask. The KN95s are really pretty comfortable. I've worn those too. It's not too late to get your flu shot. Actually, we give a flu shot all the way through March and April if we need to. Uh, vaccination, unfortunately, does not prevent you from getting Omicron. It prevents you from dying from it. It prevents hospitalization, but it doesn't mean you still won't get Omicron if you're not wearing a mask. And then remember covidtest.gov, click on that, order your four free tests, which, you know, honestly are not free. We've paid for those with our tax dollars. Remember your pyramid of health, and I think all of you must have because you've done so well with your Omicron infections. Congratulations, you are healthy people. You did a good job taking care of your pyramid, so you've been able to get through Omicron. Again, here's our book. You can prevent a stroke. Uh, read it. It's got some great tips. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a good week.